Welcome to the Summit for Wellness podcast, where we help you climb to the peak of your health. And now, here is your host, Brian Carroll. Chronic stress. With the way this year has been going, I'm guessing most of us have experienced an increase in our stress levels. While some levels of stress are good for us and it pushes our bodies to adapt to change, too much stress can lead us down an unhealthy road. What's up everyone, I'm Brian Carroll and I'm here to help people move more, eat well, and be adventurous. And today, I have Master Ming Tong Gu on the show to talk all about chronic stress and how to recognize what stressors are impacting your life. Master Ming Tong Gu also is hosting a chronic stress and disease summit that starts next week on August 10th. And if you don't know what a summit is, it's basically an online conference where many health experts come together and share different presentations around a topic. And for this summit, there are more than 45 experts who are presenting over the course of seven days. You can get free access to the talks from August 10th through the 16th by going to summitforwellness.com slash stress summit. Also, since we are talking about ways to reduce stress, one way is to supply yourself with amazing nutrients that are supportive to your body and immune system. Athletic Greens is one of those products that I really like to use since it has 75 nutrient-rich ingredients that are designed to be easily digestible. You can learn more about Athletic Greens by going to summitforwellness.com slash greens. Now, let's dive into my conversation with Master Ming Tong Gu. Master Ming Tong Gu brings ancient wisdom to the West for better health and consciousness in contemporary times. He was named Qigong Master of the Year by the 13th World Congress for Qigong and Traditional Chinese Medicine. He is the founder of the Qi Center and the Center for a Wisdom Healing Qigong, which is a beautiful 79-acre retreat center located 20 minutes south of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, thank you so much, Master Ming Tu, for coming onto the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you, Brian, with your community to hear what we can share today. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm really excited to chat with you because you do a lot of different stuff with uh, stress and being able to uh, get people to come back into their bodies and just relax and become one with um, just their environment. So can you tell us a little bit more about your background and uh, what got you into all of this? Right. Yeah, it's been a journey, you know, I think ultimately we go slow, different lessons of life and eventually realizing the importance of health, importance uh, how do you can, you know, not only, you know, hear from whatever disease, but maintain your health, but also really fulfilling your spiritual purpose here on the planet Earth. So the health is really the foundation. So I'm excited to share with you my discovery because I um, grew up as a child, not as a strong boy, really sick boy with uh, chronic illness such as gorillas, asthma condition. And then I study uh, very intellectual things, including mathematics. I spent 10 years studying mathematics from college, almost to finish the PhD. <laughs> then I discover, say, oh, that's not for me. And uh, I was pretty good at it, you know, good enough to be in the PhD program, but realizing this is not really my thing, it's not really making me happy. So then I discover in this process, discover uh, fine arts, become very passionate, like really, like almost like falling in love overnight. Then I have to do something about it. Then I eventually went to graduate school for fine arts without any academic background, you know, beforehand. So I was fortunate enough able to do that. Then after 10 years of being artist, I discovered Qigong. Then realizing, oh, Qigong is something is really, um, it's not so much of academic, but it's more to do with how to become happy. And that's my original idea, is I want to be happy. <laughs> I think everybody can relate to that, right? We all want to be happy and try different ways, different things, different relationships, different profession, different way of making money, you know, trying to be happy, then eventually realizing, hmm, something is missing. If I'm not still not happy, something, you know, missing. So then at that time, you know, 
at on one hand, fine arts is really liberating my spirit, liberating my creativity, and start feel you know kind of sense of meaning for myself, and I can become more creative, playful, enjoying life to certain degrees. But still, somehow there's a gap there. So Qigong just came to me. And so once I discovered Qigong, realizing in the beginning, spiritually, I feel this is really important. I need to try it, discover. So then once I start doing that, realizing just kind of naturally coming together in me, I feel, you know, feel better about myself, feel better in my life, and feel better about, you know, just what's the words, um, what I'm doing, who I am in general. So I become very involved in the beginning without realizing the health benefit because this condition I had was, uh, you know, diagnosed as incurable, <laughs> chronic. So all I have learned live with it. And, but for spiritual intellectual reason, I became very dedicated with this form of Qigong, called Wisdom Healing Qigong. So eventually I went to China to study. And my teacher is the founder of the system of Qigong. And he had a medicine Qigong hospital in China in a very large scale, 5,000 people practicing together for one month at a time when I was there. So that allowed me diving very deep. So in two years as a surprise, I was able to totally cover from these chronic condition, including asthma, sclerosis. But more importantly, the gift is to discover possibility of happiness, deeper happiness, fulfillment of life. And since then, basically, I decided to teach full time about 20 years ago. That's my short story. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm really curious because you're talking about the pursuit of happiness here. Um, are you, is the ultimate goal to find constant happiness or is the feelings that you experience throughout life what makes that level of happiness even more special? Because you know the different, you know, you've been through sad moments, you've been through moments of anger and all of that just equates to, well, now I know what true happiness actually feels like. Yeah. So you might say, you know, um, a sweet level of happiness. Yeah. When is uh, you feel good about what you have, you know, your relationship, you know, your money, so a sense of status, you know, uh, respect from other people that can give you a sense of happiness. Overall, you feel like, okay, I feel good about life, about, you know, <laughs> so that is the first level of happiness that's most people searching for. And that's always, you know, impermanent, always conditional. It never satisfies us for long term, so to speak, yeah. And then the second level of happiness is more about, you know, feeling good about yourself, who you are. As well, what are you doing? You know, you find your passion for your life. You find in the meaning for your life. You're engaging in something, whether, you know, it's work or a hobby, something you feel meaningful, yeah, for yourself. So you don't need the validation from others, so to speak. It does not depend on validation from others. You feel naturally okay with yourself. Yeah, not like, oh, I have to be perfect. Therefore, I feel good about myself. Just feel like uh, um, basically comfortable in your skin, so to speak. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's the second level of happiness. Then the third level of happiness is a little bit more difficult to define. It's more sense of uh, peace, inner peace. It's like feeling peace with not only yourself, with life, but in general, with existence. It's like whatever may happen in your life can be imperfect, can be challenging. You may even experience you know, sadness, even anger, even some level of fear, worry, and that's part of life. But deep underlying, you know, like a thread, of your life, feel a sense of peace. That's mm. something no one can give to you, no one can take away from you. This not really depends on the circumstances. You know, often we're trying to create a sense of satisfaction, you know, whatever conditions, so we can feel peace. But that is not the real peace. That's what I'm speaking is more like unconditional peace. Yeah. 
And often you can find that peace the moment you letting go of your story, the moment you letting go of attachment or aversion. You let them, the moment you letting go of your identification, for example, when you are in a beautiful, near place of nature, for example, you just feel a sense of settled, a part of a big picture of life. So in general, I think, you know, happiness is difficult to be defined, but in general, if you feel happiness, you know it. <laughs> if you don't feel happiness, you also know it. <laughs> so not feeling happy is okay, but as long as you're searching for happiness, as long as you're searching for deeper level of happiness, such as peace. Awesome. I love that. Uh, especially that second level that you're talking about where, uh, you know, you're trying to move away from validation of others. And we live right now in a time of social media where everybody's, you know, trying to see how many likes they can get and how many people are following them and all that. And that's all that external validation that people are looking for. But just because you have, you know, 2000 followers on a social media platform doesn't mean you actually have true happiness. <laughs> Often is opposite, unfortunately, <laughs> because the more you search for this kind of happiness, more you're losing the depths, the true peace, internal happiness. Unfortunately, you know, it's like where you're giving attention to. It's like uh, you know, if you're searching for happiness, the wrong place, it's very hard to discover true happiness. Yeah. So it's, it, life is complex. You know, when you have a certain degree of happiness or satisfactions, yeah you know there's still something deeper inside of you, almost like uh, right now, you know, we're all feeling in some level of challenges that is common, it's universal, it's a collective. We all can, you know, making whole list of things make you unhappy. But realizing is that um, the ultimate happiness is within you. You can discover for yourself. I think that is really the true gift of wisdom healing qigong for me in this process yeah realizing it's possible realizing i can come back to that as often as possible it's not like uh always automatic i cannot say and you know, i'm there 100 percent of the time no it's not possible <laughs> not yet <laughs> so, so you had mentioned i uh, you know you grew up with chronic asthma and um, you had a couple other little health issues that you were dealing with. And then once you discovered Qigong, uh, you were able to figure out what was causing the asthma. And you said, I believe that you have um, gotten rid of it. Is that correct? Yeah, totally covered from these two conditions. So can you talk about how, so like, what was the root cause of your asthma? Did mm. you ever figure out what that is? And then what were the steps through Qigong that allowed you to get rid of the chronic disease? Yeah, so it's like, it's a good question. I'm going to use my example to really emphasize the overall benefit, overall process of Qigong applying to everyone, pretty much every condition, all conditions. So in my case is, um, I do know one of the main cause for my asthma condition is uh, trauma in my childhood. <laughs> I fell into a, a toilet it's, uh, back then in China, all days, you know, in the 60s. And it's a big hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. So I was four or five years old boy and uh, accidentally I fell down to the big hole full of shit to, to this level. So <laughs> I lost conscious, basically, I couldn't breathe. Yeah. And then of course, the story goes, I came back, <laughs> but I don't remember, you know, what happened exactly afterwards. And um, so the, 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 as a trauma of that experience is I cannot breathe. And the body remember that, cannot breathe. Life is threatening. If you cannot breathe, life is not easy, right? No. <laughs> so, so that was, but, but if I ask deeply, you know, you may asking, okay, what causing this accident of uh, falling to a toilet? You may say, okay, my parents wasn't watching me. You know, I was not careful enough as a little boy. But what is cause beyond that? 
You know, it's like even that is totally beyond control. It's almost like total accident. You cannot blame anyone, so to speak. Yeah, you say, oh, uh, that's the problem of the living condition in China all days. Why they don't have a better toilet? <laughs> you know, <laughs> causing that problem. So it's not that simple. You cannot say the root cause of that is just because of the accident. So what the cause behind that? It's really a mystery, ultimately, yeah. And, but how I responding to this trauma, for example, of course, you know, I was young and I didn't know what to do with it, of course, yeah. But how my parents at the time is dealing with it, that depends on the culture. And so that depends on the circumstances. So that determined the outcome. I could be trauma, you know, have this trauma, or even losing conscious. But I ne not necessarily automatically implies I should have asthma. You know what I mean? Right. If if the certain way process deal with this instant, I could reverse that condition of trauma. I will not be traumatized. So it's really complex circumstance of life applying to everyone's in journal. It's not simple. Oh, that's one thing. Therefore, who caused that? Who is responsible? It's not simply can pointing a finger to it. <laughs> so then another condition is um, sclerosis. From what I know, it's in my family. So it can say genetic. So in that case, you cannot say whose fault is this neither. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. So the question is, what do you do? So the attitude in Qigong we're learning is no matter what happened in the past, we know you know, your whole life from childhood, your whole history of life is affecting how you're functioning right now, this moment. No question about it. It's no brainer. You cannot deny that fact. And recognizing everything is interconnected. One thing leads to another, another thing, another thing, you know. So you cannot isolate just one thing. That's the only cause of, for your issue, for your problem, for your health crisis. No, you cannot simply say that neither. And on the other hand, what happened in the past, on one hand, is complex, interconnected. On the other hand, is you cannot change, right? Whatever happened, it happened already. No matter how much you complain, how much you blame, how many you analyze, how many you believe in, you cannot change it. So ultimately, you become just a victim. So the choice we're making is on one hand, is recognizing, oh, everything happening has happened in my life. What I know, even including what I don't know, is affecting me right now, this moment. Because my energy, this body carries energy memory. That is the entire history of my life in the interaction with others, interaction with the societies, interaction with the planet Earth. That's all in my energy field. And that determines the function, my organ, my cells, even my heart, emotional experience as well, my mental thinking this moment. So recognizing honoring the history is affecting us. But on the other hand, is this moment acknowledging you can access your energy no matter what happened in the past. You can make positive change in your own energy system. And by doing that, you're changing the function of your existence including your health, including your emotional experience, response to life, including your mental creativity and your choice of life in general. So that is the, um, the good news. That's the empowerment. That is like almost like shocking realization for me, you know? And it happened about when I was in the center. I was like puzzled by, you know, everything's happening you know, especially, you know, on one hand, observing other people heal these complex disease. But on the other hand, it's like uh, the story is so complex and I feel like overwhelmed, like, what should I do, you know? And so my experience is different from everyone else. So then realizing, oh, ultimately, it's up to me how to access my body, access the energy, transforming the pattern inside of me. 
So realizing the whole Qigong is about that, is about that. So over the time, it becomes simple, simple. In the beginning, you know, learning this uh, movement, very challenging in the beginning, especially like for me, I have a sclerosis condition. You know, any kind of physical movement is painful, challenging. Even I was young enough at a later, my almost early 30s. And um, then emotion came up. You know, I didn't know what to do with it. But the process of Qigong allow you to work with these patterns inside of us. So basically, the principle is simple. If the energy is contracted, it doesn't matter what happened in the past. This moment, if the energy in your body is contracted, then the function of physical, emotional, mental, spiritual is compromised. It doesn't matter what is your diagnosis. But the good news, if you can open the contraction, open the energy flow again, then all the function can return back to normal again. So then you're realizing, oh, this movement is beyond just exercises, beyond just enhancing the muscles, tissue, you know, <laughs> fitness. It's increasing your energy capacity, releasing the stress tension from the body. All these sound practice is awakening the deeper dimension of your five organ, including the emotional body, enhancing, releasing these traumatized emotion in my case, yeah? Especially in the lung, yeah? It cannot breathe, not only affecting the lung function, but the emo when the energy of the lung contracted, you start to feel more sadness of life. And that's what I remember in, from my ch childhood. You know, I have external reason, difficult childhood making me feel sad. But the trauma, that trauma, that complication in the long energy really intensify this emotion of sadness. So when you discover them, when you make the change through the process, then you're realizing not only while you're doing it, you're feeling better about yourself, about your energy level, about your functions in your life. But when you're repeating it, then realizing, oh, not only I can you know, improve my health, recover from whatever condition, but I can sustain health. And that's a really powerful you know, insight. insight. Even like yesterday, I was having a conversation with my wife. You know, we all spend so much money in healthcare, insurance. You know, we have the lowest insurance for the family but still like $700 a month for nothing. You know, we don't go to the hospital at all. <laughs> I mean, in the last 30 years, 20 some years, I never used anything, health insurance, like waste of the money, right? But that is coming from, you know, all these years of dedication, practice, and building up this confidence. I know I can take care of myself. I know every day I'm maintaining my house, even improving my house. And I think that is the vision is possible for everyone. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up that about the health care, because in reality, it's more like a sick care that you're paying for, nope. not really health care. Yeah. Health care would be going through Qigong or, you know, working on nutrition or other practices right. and that, right. that. Oh, right money there. care is covering your butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. It's not really bringing true health. But on no. the other hand, yes, uh, for emergency reason, for, you know, for like urgent, uh, what's the um, kind of acute condition. And the, thing yep. the healthcare system is really beneficial, is really important, really required. But for most of the condition, especially so-called chronic condition that doesn't have a solution. No. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see if I can break down uh, Qigong a little bit from what you just said. So um, all of your life experiences create different energies within your body, and that comprises who you are, right? And um, it doesn't matter necessarily that you fell into a toilet at five years old. Right. That That's just part of who you are. Exactly. But going going through different movements and whatnot in Qigong, you're releasing a lot of that negative energy 
and you're able to kind of work through different scenarios and situations that you went through in your lifetime and then start creating more of a positive energy out of that. Is that correct? So, yeah, I would uh, modify that, Ryan. The word sometimes is very powerful. So it's less about positive, negative. It's more about, say, you know, malfunction pattern of energy. Yeah, it's like, a, let's say, you know, one is a healthy pattern, another is, let's say, unhealthy pattern. One is more beneficial pattern, and there is a more limited pattern, compromised pattern. So it's less about good and bad. It's more about continuous improvement, recognizing when the energy is contracted. For example, in my case, when I had the trauma, the, the energy in my lung contract, I couldn't breathe, yeah? Then all other systems affected. My kidney systems, you know, nerve system, energy all contracted. But if I'm just contracted, for five minutes, even for five hours, I'm fine if I can come back you know, to normal patterns. But if I stuck there, then they become a chronic illness, chronic pattern, so to speak. And that's often happened for people, especially um, uh, if you don't know how to deal with the trauma, whether you're too young as a child or is not going through a process of healing you know, early enough. Yeah. Then another process of the contraction is really about everyday life. You know, we're facing challenge of life. So what happened? Unfortunately, we're not aware of it. We may aware, okay, this part of my life is not perfect, challenging, difficult. I don't know what to do. You know, I feel stressed mentally, you know, finding a solution here, there. You can engage in this stressful um, process. But you don't know is your body is carrying the stress as a contracted energy. So often we're searching a solution externally, trying to change the circumstance of stress instead of dealing with the stress in the body. That is the issue. This disconnection preventing us from dealing with the stressful circumstances more effectively. So we carry the stress over the time, whether you have trauma or not in the past. It's like, you know, decades of stress, then creating the same energy pattern of contraction that can be caused by trauma or accumulative stress. So then as a result, it's the same health issue. Doesn't matter what is the diagnosis. So if the energy contract in your heart, for example, then you can have a heart issue physically, then emotionally, you feel lack of happiness, lack of joy. So the opposite, when the energy is opening up in your heart, then you're feeling more health in the heart cardiovascular system, but also in your emotion, especially feeling more joy, more happiness. So that's just one example. If the energy contracts in the kidney system, then you have a problem with the, you know, the productive system, hormone system, skeleton system, in terms of health, physical health, but emotionally, you will experience more fear as a pattern. And that mm -hmm. is like the main pattern we're experiencing. I think that is the most challenging pattern we're experiencing in humanity. Now, uh, with Qigong, is there a specific flow of movements? Or as you're discovering these uh, different areas in the body where trauma might be centralized, like the heart, um, are there specific movements to release that type of energy? Yeah, it's a good question. So we do three kinds of practice. One is movement practice in general, releasing the tension, stress, contract energy from all these areas, including the shoulder is one problematic area. Secondly is the spine. The third is the hip area. Then from this weak key area, you're expanding further to the arm, to the hands, to all the joints, to the muscle tissue, to all the meridian energy channels, also affecting the subtle energy field, which is invisible beyond just physical. So that is the first practice, is movement. And the second kind of practice is sound, vibration. Allow you to go further, deeper. In this case, is allow you to access the energy of the organ more effectively than the movement. 
and the vibration, you know, from we have experienced when you're listening to a piece of music, you, you naturally feel better, you know, without going to a mental process, or even without moving your body, you just feel better naturally. So the, the, the language of the music directly affects you, affecting your emotional body. So, so when you're making a sound, it's like you are playing music with your own body as an instrument. And then you're directly not only affecting the energy of your limb of your body, but go directly into your five organ system. And I feel that is the most powerful process for emotional healing transformation from my own experience. And uh, in our community, we practice a lot of sound healing, especially for the time being, as we're experiencing so much stress. The main stress is emotional stress. And come out of that stress, the main pattern is the fearful pattern, fight, flight. It can be expressed in other, you know, organ, such as worry, such as anger, such as sadness, even depression right now. So the sound healing is most powerful from my experience to address the emotional stress, emotional trauma, emotional contraction in a five organ system. Then the third kind of practice is really awareness. So you meditate, you become more aware, internally aware of your body. In the beginning, you become more aware of the stress the body carries so you can release it, open them. If you're not aware of it, then you ignore it, you dismiss it. Then you're surprised when the diagnosis comes. You know, that is the common phenomenon. I think most of us have a direct or indirect experience. If yourself or someone else, you know, diagnosed uh, as some severe condition, cancer, you know, Parkinson, whatever condition might be, most of the time people are shocked. It's like, why me? Why now? As if something happened just overnight. But actually, <laughs> nothing happens overnight, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cumulative result of the past. But if we're living life every day, if we're not aware, then you're surprised, basically. Hmm. And that is what's happening. So cultivating awareness is the first step, most important. So do you ever uh, combine Qigong with either TCM or acupuncture as well? Good question. In this form of Qigong, it's not required. And obviously, you know, um, practitioners often receive different support, including, you know, if they need it, allopathic medicine, you know, integrative medicines, you know, these uh, supports, other therapeutic tradition. But Qigong itself mainly focuses on self-healing, hmm. self-regulation, self-empowerment, self-care. Yeah. And often I say, you know, um, the energy system of yourself, that's your own energy system. You have this access to your own energy system than anyone else in the world. If you don't access it, then <laughs> nobody you know, can truly solve the puzzle for you. So no matter what you do, eventually you have to come to this realization. That is kind of the philosophy you know, I share with other people. And of course, ultimately, you know, depends on person's journey, yeah. Some people usually they tried everything first and still realizing something is missing or not as the effect they wanted. Then then discover Qigong, self-healing practice. And, but a lot of people nowadays open to this idea that know intuitively there's something I can do myself to make a difference. So they may, you know, heard a story from friends, you know, watching a video online, then realizing, oh, that's what I'm being searching for. They show up in this intense practice, including literary and online programs, so on. So different people have a different journey. But in general, the goal of Wisdom Healing Qigong is uh, you continuously empower yourself, no matter what support you're receiving right now, no matter what happened in the past, eventually, you can gradually, the key word is gradually, letting go of dependence on others, dependence on medicine, dependence on someone else or something else. 
So in a sense, even you know you had to have a health insurance, but you feel confident you can maintain your health in deep inside. Of you. That's the goal. So another relevant piece is uh, you know is the most important is really it's about no matter what is your goal is is ultimately if you today if you can have more energy and make yourself more functional in your life more fulfilling your life you know then something you're doing for yourself creating that that you can repeat every day then ultimately no matter what is your ultimate goal is you can move in towards that goal if you cannot do that today you know, start doing something for yourself to make a difference, then no matter what goal you have, <laughs> you would not be fully, you know, uh, accomplishing that. You will be disappointed one way or another. <laughs> That's kind of my philosophy. <laughs> well, it sounds pretty amazing because, um, you know, you don't need anything fancy. All you need oh, is yourself absolutely. and you're able to do all of this. Absolutely. You have everything you need, your own mind, your own body, your own heart, your own energy system, your own, you know, natural birthright of connection with the energy of the universe. But you have to, you know, have an intention, have a commitment, have a, the process engaging. Yeah. Well, uh, Ming Tongu, do you have any uh, final things that you want to touch on with Qi Gong and um, just how people can, uh, you know, start implementing this into their own life. So that is the amazing thing about on one hand is um, Qigong allow you to access your energy, change in the pattern, addressing all issues, physical issue, emotional issue in this process, making positive change and uh, improving the baseline of your health in all level of physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. On the other hand, it's, it's the simplicity. It's so simple. So this movement is, uh, is everybody can do it. And it doesn't matter how young, how old you are. It doesn't matter how sick, how you know, healthy you are. You can do it. So that's a different from yoga. And that's a different from other exercises. Require, you know, these two activities often require certain fitness before you can nearly fully engage, yeah. So Qigong is like, you know, if you are healthy enough, then you engage in more challenging practice. If you're really sick, then you engage in more relaxing practice. You can modify this movement according to your own condition. So in general, it's meditative, but on the other hand, it's, uh, it's enough challenges according to your own condition to work with. So by working with the challenges, you can improve yourself. So if it's too easy for everyone, then you will not enjoy the benefit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it's a really interesting thing. It's like people are responding to the same practice differently according to your own health challenges, according to where you're at. Enough challenge for you to make the difference, but at the same time, is comfortable enough to engage in the practice. So it's not sports, yeah, it's not exercises. Then on the other hand, you see if uh, certain movement is too much, you can do the sound healing practice. I recommend that anyway. No matter how much movement you can do, the sound practice is so in essential. Emotional healing is so e essential for your well-being, including your physical health, mental health. So that's what I love about is again, the simplicity, simplicity. And another thing is that nowadays is so accessible through the internet, through online. You don't have to always, you know, depends on a local teacher, a class to go, like yoga class weekly and so on. You can start in now online and there's abundance resources available and um, we're going to share more resources with you. Yep. Yeah, because you have uh, resources at the chi center.com. Obviously, right now, um, it's really hard to do a 
on-site retreats, so that's not happening. Um, hopefully, again, in, in somewhere in the near future, you can start doing that again. Uh, but you do have the online options there, correct? We do, yeah. On one hand, I'm looking for some day you can have in-person retreat in Santa Fe. That's always so special. On the other hand, our online program has been very active. We have uh, one category of free service called the Qi TV twice a week and Tuesday and Saturday. You can find the information in the Qi Center website, chicenter.com. Then other paid program, weekly long, month long, so on available. Then another program is retreat. So for people go more intensively, diving more deeply uh, online in the convenience of home. And people have discovered how powerful it is. I can say almost as powerful as in person. And even um, the connection is like different way of intimacy, you know. <laughs> you know, right like now, even we look at each other, talking to each other, we feel a sense of intimacy, a little bit different from in person, but another level kind of intimacy. So imagine we do this, you know, with a group of people and sharing very deeply. It's really powerful experience, especially in this time when we're feeling isolated in our home and can cultivate in this experience of connection, slow community online is so important, is so fulfilling. And now, uh, just a couple of days after this releases, uh, you have a chronic disease and stress summit that you are releasing, which if people don't know, summits are where a bunch of different experts come on and talk about um, uh, specific topics, and in this case, chronic disease and stress. And I'll, um, usually those videos are available for free for a couple of days, and then um, people can get access to them whenever they want down the road. So can you talk about your summit? What's go going to be um, some of the main talks that you're really excited about, and uh, what should people do to learn more about it? Yeah, I think um, you have been working hard in the background for the last six months, I'm very excited for launching this summit. Uh, on one hand, it's really bring a whole range of speakers, authors, readers in healthcare, speaking about subject matters of you know, healing of chronic, not only chronic disease, but chronic stress affecting everybody. And then providing the whole range of you know, information and suggestion, also processes, and uh, how to work with these issues. So from uh, mostly integrated medicine to spiritual tradition, energy medicine, mind-body practice, and also you know addressing such as relation between the health and the relationship, your, your purpose of life and health and so on. So all these complex but important issues was to connecting the dots but more importantly, for you to discover what is possible for you. So you can expand in your resources yeah, from what you've been doing and with more understanding, but also with more tools, you can move forward to take care of yourself more effectively. So including we can offer daily wisdom healing Qigong meditation, addressing specific powerful challenging issues such as cancer, and Lyme disease, autoimmune condition in general, and uh, trauma and depressions, all the different, you know, powerful, challenging cases. Awesome. And uh, we'll have links at summitforwellness.com slash stress summit for people to sign up for the summit, um, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, well, thank you so much, Master Ming Tonggu, for coming on. I loved our conversation, and I learned a lot more about Qigong and what it can do for uh, just your body and your spirit. So thank you so much. You're so, so welcome. Thank you, Brian, for what you do for this opportunity of sharing <laughs> my passion with all of you. <laughs> so hope this is benefiting everyone who are listening, watching, whichever way, now in the near future. Hola. I hope you were able to learn some neat ideas from Master Ming Tong Gu about different ways to reduce stress to fight disease. And remember, he has a summit that starts on August 10th that will have a lot of different strategies to reduce stress to the body. And the presentations are from a lot of different experts. 
While some strategies might seem a little different than what you might be used to, I'm sure there are lots of talks that you would resonate really well with. Plus, the summit is free. So head on over to summitforwellness.com slash stress summit to learn more and to attend for free. Next week, I have Katherine Arnston on the show. Let's go learn who she is and what she does. I am here with Katherine Arnston. Hey, Katherine, what is one unique thing about you that most people don't know? Oh, uh, well, that I used to be the publisher of a national interior design magazine. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you want to share the name? Well, it doesn't exist any longer, but it used to be called Design Times, and it was a local Boston publication. I took it national and international, and I loved it because I love design. I love beautiful things and making people's making people feel great. But now I make people feel great from the inside with nutrition instead of uh, out uh, instead of interiors. <laughs> Which leads us into what will we be learning about in our interview together? Wow. Well, you'll learn why not. You'll learn why you definitely need to add algae to your diet. How simple it is, how fast it is, how science-based it is, um, and all the amazing health benefits that you'll get from something that's a single-cell organism called a that's a superfood um, and a gift to us from Mother Nature. Which, by the way, was the first life on Earth four billion years ago. <laughs> and what are your favorite foods or nutrients that you think everyone should get more of in their diet? Well, algae for sure. Um, and I'm a big fan of avocado because of the, uh, it's technically a fruit, but it's loaded with uh, short chain fatty acids, which feed those beautiful little uh, bacteria in your gut to keep them happy. And if you're sort of like happy wife, happy life, same thing with those bacteria in your gut, you keep them happy, everything else will be good. <laughs> so those are two I would recommend. And what are your top three health tips for anyone who wants to improve their overall wellness? Um, uh, take baby steps, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's, uh, making a nutritional change or a fitness, uh, adopting a new fitness routine, baby steps and, and, and celebrate those baby steps. Um, patience, which is related to base, you know, baby steps. Um, so that's the same thing, move your body. Um, get really good sleep and make sure you're getting the most nutrient dense food that you can so that that's so when, when I say food, I mean, not things that come in a can bottle, wrapper, tin, foil, <laughs> that's not food. Food comes from the earth or and has one ingredient. <laughs> so move your body, sleep well, eat food and um, uh, take baby steps. I guess that's four. Sorry. <laughs> As you can see, we have a very